federal courts have ruled that UNC Chapel Hill can continue to use race as a factor in university admissions. But critics of that policy now want the U.S. Supreme Court to step in. The original plaintiffs in that case are getting help in a friend of the court brief from a coalition, and that coalition includes Project 21, the National Leadership Network of Black Conservatives. Project 21 member Melanie Collette joins us now to discuss the case. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. Why did Project 21 decide to get involved in this case that really deals with one university in, in one state? Why, why was this something important to you? Because it, it's certainly a slippery slope and you know, we, we at Project 21 are, are very concerned with things like equality, particularly the, the rules of equality that liberals don't usually play by, which is truly being equal. Liberals will tell you that, it, that this is equality by tipping the scales uh, by, by use of race. But if, you are, if you're following the law in earnest and, and the principles and spirit of the law, then of course you cannot use race if you're saying that everyone is to be treated equally. When Project 21 was promoting its involvement in this coalition, it quoted you as saying, race is not an indicator of one's academic success in college. How important is it to get that out there? It, it's very important because it, I, it, for me personally, I'll say that it, it, it's, it seems like a black cloud over my education, I have a master's degree, over my career as an educator, everybody kind of looks at you like, oh, she's an affirmative action hire. Oh, she must have been able to get into her master's program and I'm in a PhD program because she's African-American or because she's a woman. And you don't want those kinds of things to tip the scale. You don't want to live in a world where you're viewed as lesser. And I would argue that that is exactly what the plan is. As I said in that statement, that's the real white supremacy, is the thought that Blacks are always going to be inferior, that Blacks are always going to need a hand up from a white person in order to be successful. And that, and that is something that we should oppose. You also described in that statement that it's basically constant messaging to it, it is. It's, it's constant messaging to the point where many African Americans always think that they are in a victim, a state of victimhood, that anything that happens to them must have something to do with race and not some other circumstance, some other uh, context that's going on, or God forbid, maybe it's just some, some detail that you don't know about. But the presumption is that it must be because I'm black. It must be because I'm a person of color. I'm not suggesting that there are not instances where that's the case. What I am suggesting is that we as people of color, as African-Americans do some critical thinking when things happen, examine what's going on and do some critical thinking. It may not be because of race. It could be because of something else, but I feel it's the messaging that we constantly get from the media Every time something happens, it's happening to all of us. It's happening at large. You know, police are hunting black people down. We're constantly being treated badly. And what that does to one's mentality is puts them in a victimhood state. And, and again, I'll say that that's the real racism to keep blacks, African-Americans, people of color in a constant state of victimhood so that they feel like they can't achieve. And it, it, it's insidious. It's a nice little mind trick that they do. People who've been following this case closely probably think of it in terms of Asian American students or prospective students talking about how the rules are unfair to them and haven't really thought about the fact that there might be some African American Black folks who also think the rules are unfair, even though the rules are supposed to be helping them. Do you, do you hope that by getting involved in this, that you'll get people to think a little bit differently about this case? For sure, because of that constant messaging that I spoke about, there's the presumption that all Black people think about this the same way, that all Black people feel as though they're victims, that all Black people feel as though they're constantly put upon because of the color of their skin. And that is just certainly not the case. There are black people who are critical thinkers, who are observing what's actually going on in the country, who are looking at the actual statistics 
of things that go on and realizing that this is just not the case as a country. It isn't the case. Again, I want to reiterate, I'm not suggesting that there's zero percent racism that goes on. There certainly is. And those things need to be absolutely addressed. And, you know, those people need to be drawn and quartered or called out on their racism when it happens. But by and large, our country is not racist. Black people have the wherewithal, the discipline, and the intellect to successfully get admitted to college and succeed and graduate and go on to great professional lives. This brief that you all are involved in was written by the Pacific Legal Foundation, which is a group that often goes to court to try to protect people's rights. But the coalition also includes groups that are uh, predominantly Asian American or uh, other groups. Do you think it, it sends a good message that you have folks from various different perspectives and who are put in various categories, all getting together saying, look, we all see that there's something wrong with this. I think it is. And I think that that's America, that that's the real America, a unified America that looks at the constitution and respects the constitution and thinks that it, it should be followed. And there shouldn't be any exemptions in which, unless you wanna go ahead and, and change the law, but equal, opportunity and equality under the law is very clear. You cannot use race when something like that and then still say it's equal. There's no, there's no such thing as that. If somebody finds a situation, which Asian Americans have certainly had this problem, where because race is a factor and they're using race, which by the way, higher institutions used to deny, now they're going on and saying, yes, we're actually doing that. And Asians, are being disenfranchised and nobody seems to be bothered by that. And, it, it, and, and we should be because no one should be disenfranchised. One of the interesting things in the brief was the idea that uh, this type of policy helps foster and continue these various stereotypes, not just about the fact that, uh, in fact, it's not a fact, not just about the assumption that blacks are not going to be able to make it on their own, but also that Asians have to steer away from being part of the chess club or wanting to become a doctor because that's a stereotype and they, they won't be able to get in. Uh, it sounds as if this type of policy just hits every particular student in the wrong way. And it makes presumptions about people based on the color of their skin. And that's a problem. If you have a, a, uh, a an African-American who grew up and I'll, I'll use myself as an example again, in Cape May County, New Jersey, which is a very rural area. It's maybe 5% people of color, if that. Um, and it's a little bit more here, here recently, but it's, a, it's pretty low as far as people of color. And this is where I grew up. I can guarantee that my experiences are probably a bit different than an African-American woman who grew up on the South side of, of Chicago. Those are the types of things that should be considered when you're talking about the admissions process, what was the success of the public school that I attended? Those things should be measured if you want to use some race neutral criteria in order to see how successful someone's going to be in college and whether or not they should be admitted into the school. And if you admit them, what kind of educational supports they might need. But what is not a criteria is how much melanin they have. Yeah, one of the interesting things about the brief was that uh, it showed that in a number of cases, not just one or two here and there, but as much as 1% for in-state students and 5% for out-of-state students, race was the determining factor. It wasn't yeah. just one little piece. Exactly. And so they, they try to suggest, they're talking out of both sides of, of their mouths. They're trying to suggest that we use a lot of race-neutral criteria. However, there are, like, as you stated, the stats, 1% uh, where the, the, the race was a determining factor and 5% in another area where race was a determining factor. And what that means is all things being equal, if you had an Asian American with the same criteria as an African American and that African American is going to beat that Asian American out. And I, I, I would bet a year's salary that there's other criteria that's race neutral that could be used to decide between those two candidates. 
So this is a friend of the court brief goes to the U.S. Supreme Court, along with the brief from the, the actual plaintiffs petitioners in this case, trying to get the Supreme Court to take it up. If the U.S. Supreme Court takes up this case, what would you and fellow members of Project 21 like to see happen? Really would like to see them revamp the previous law that, that approved this uh, race-based uh, admissions process. It should not be, we need to promote equality. We need to have a actual unity in the country. And all these kinds of policies do is serve to divide. And so we want a unified uh, country and a unified admissions process and one that is not demeaning and offensive to people of color. Melanie Collette is a member of Project 21, which is the National Leadership Network of Black Conservatives. It is one of the groups, part of a coalition that has filed a friend of the court brief asking the U.S. Supreme Court to take up this case dealing with the race-based admissions at UNC Chapel Hill. Melanie, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.